For both the spectator and the player, the finger roll is one of the single most satisfying moves in basketball. When done correctly, it is just a beautiful thing to behold. It's an especially captivating summary of the things that draw us to the game, gracefulness, skill, and athleticism. But did man take his first steps upon the earth with finger rolling in his heart? Where did this move come from and why? Very few players have scored as uniquely or as artfully as the Iceman, George Gervin. Gervin played 14 seasons from 1973 to 1986. Four of those were in the freewheeling ABA, and the other 10, the bulk of his career, were in the NBA, mostly with the San Antonio Spurs. He was a spindly, 6'7", converted perimeter player with cashmere soft touch and huge hands. You often hear people use this term, bucket getter, and Gervin was that, with the finger roll as a primary weapon. Still, I shouldn't assume that everyone knows what the hell I'm talking about. We should establish first what a finger roll is and is not. A true finger roll goes like this. A player, typically with downhill momentum, gets about 5 to 12 feet away from the rim, and instead of running past the backboard and shooting, they pull back their forward momentum as they elevate. While in the air, the player extends their arm and then softly rolls the ball off of their fingertips. Not every underhanded shot is a finger roll. A key distinction is in the separation of those last two movements. Full extension and then that soft underhanded rolling flick motion. If done correctly, you're stopping the horizontal flight of the ball and instead flipping it upwards and allowing it to fall. That gives the ball a better chance to go in. So why is George Gervin famous for that shot? Well, it's because of his unusual situational use of the move. Right at the rim, sure, we've seen that plenty in the years that have followed, but finger rolling from 10 feet away or sometimes further, in areas where most players might try an overhanded runner or a floater, that's insanity. Ice was a terrific athlete and a capable dunker, but he stated on numerous occasions that dunking was hurting his hands, and he needed a new way to evade shot blockers while still taking a high percentage shot. The finger roll also gave George the opportunity to entertain and demonstrate his skill, which is something that he cared about and something that was considered essential to the personality of the ABA at the time. Also, there's a type of player that I call a tuxedo scorer, and George was an original in that category. If he could make a fool of you without mucking it up, he would. Basketball is also like anything else in that influence has guided its evolution. George Gervin did not invent the finger roll. Aside from one famous Nike commercial. That was my patented, that was my patented shot. One thing I could do was finger roll. Publicly, Gervin has been very clear about that in the last few decades. I am not the inventor of the finger roll. I'm the one that made the finger roll famous because I had three other guys that I can emulate and then put my own style on it. Three players made significant contributions to the evolution of the move. Will Chamberlain's unstoppable dipper move from the 1960s and 1970s was different, but it came first. And it's difficult to know if he inspired smaller players with it. Connie Hawkins, one of Gervin's idols, came second. Hawkins is an often forgotten entry in the history of smooth, explosive, and skilled wings with great size, but he was a bridge between Elgin Baylor and the way that we see modern scoring wings. The final influence was from one of the most influential players ever, Julius Irving. When Ice and Dr. J were both playing for the Virginia Squires in 1972 and 1973, supposedly the two would do battle every day after practice. He stated countless times that Irving's swooping finger rolls had an impact on his own style. Another factor was the way that the game was being played at the time. Before the heavy use of the three-point line, taller scorers were looking for creative ways to navigate the crowded mid-range. And for a talented and nimble scorer like Gervin, that led to a whole collection of funky shots. The finger roll was one shot in a deep arsenal of moves. It just happened to be his most famous. So did fashion overrule function here? Was the move actually useful? Well, I scored over 26,000 career points on a career true shooting percentage of 56.4. He led the NBA in scoring four different times with these types of shots as his go-to moves. So, I'd call that a big yes. Do me a favor, try and find a Spurs game from the late 70s or early 80s where Gervin doesn't finger roll. It's hard to do.
While the simplest version of the shot itself is replicable, the circumstances that cause the funkiness and the efficiency of Gervin's finger roll might not be. So, yes and no. Even those with the power to perfect it might not have the time, interest, or patience to. It's like the wall jumps in Mario Kart 64. If you can execute them, great, you've got an advantage. If not, you're hurting yourself. One trait that this move absolutely mandates is touch. And Ice might be on the first team all time when it comes to touch finishing. He was like a virtuosic theremin player in traffic with the ball. He had absurd flick and softness in his wrist and his fingers, even when his shot was altered or pressured. This is just my opinion, but that level of touch is something that happens when an already gifted person puts in oceans of time and reps doing a specific thing. George says that a janitor used to let him spend hours in the gym perfecting his touch. Players of any size can pull this move off, but touch, mid-air ball control, and a high release point are what elevate the move's effectiveness. Gervin had a weird frame. He's one of the few players that genuinely physically resembled the cartoon version of himself in NBA Street. Today, Gervin would probably shoot 10 threes a game. Back then, circumstances were different and oddities like that would pop up as a result. I'm not sure that I would say that this is a move that has had a dramatic effect on basketball at large. Its impact was tied directly to the players that followed in the tradition of Elgin Baylor, Connie Hawkins, Dr. J, and Gervin. Michael Jordan, for example, built on what they did and expanded it, and several others have come along and added in. When I think about the lankiest, craftiest finishers of today, I think about Kawhi, Pascal Siakam, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Ja Morant, even Giannis. All of these players could finger roll, and they only occasionally do. While the move is immensely famous, the consistent use of the move itself is somewhat novel. Gervin helped inject artistry and flair into the history and the culture of the NBA, and the finger roll was a big part of that. On the court, he was the personification of cool. Those high top Nike blazers with Iceman stitched on the back, that iconic poster of him sitting on the ice throne, it just doesn't get much cooler than that. Gervin's career was not decorated from a winning standpoint. To me, his impact falls in the same realm as guys like Allen Iverson, Kyrie Irving, Carmelo Anthony, players that get criticized by hoops historians and the media for their rigid playing styles, and then equally beloved by the oncoming generation for their style and inspiring individualism. While George's version of the finger roll rarely happens today, when one does happen, it's still a move that means more than the points it puts on the scoreboard. It communicates total control. It says, not only do I have the ability to score here, but I have such an immense amount of skill that I have the option to show restraint. And that was the Iceman. The move was the ethos of the man. Some moves just validate the joy of the game, and George Gervin's finger roll is unquestionably one of them. Let me know if you agree.